Rick Astley. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on the great success. You, Thank you. have Thanks conquered uh, how many countries? Uh? Um, I've been to quite a lot of countries now. Um, we've been uh, quite successful in Europe, and uh, recently I've been to America as well. But uh, this is my first trip to Japan. I'm going to Australia pretty yeah. soon. So we've been around quite a bit, but there's a few places we've got to go to yet. Yeah. You were 21, right? Um, I've just turned 22, actually, 22. in February, yes. Thanks. And you have been singing? Uh... Uh, since about the age of... 18 really. I played drums before that for a couple of years, but uh, I've been singing now since about the age of 18. Mm. What, what's the story about you were in a, in a, in a choir uh, when you were um, a kid and you used to sound real high, you know? Yeah, well, the yeah. thing was, um, I was at school uh, and I was at a school that, that was connected with the church, St. Peter's, and uh, basically if you had a half-decent voice, you got thrown into the choir as well, you see. So uh, it wasn't something that I particularly wanted to do. I was only about 9, 10 or 11, something like that. So. Uh, it was just that I happened to mention it once in an interview and uh, oh, yeah. blown out of proportion as per usual, you know. So. You, you didn't uh, 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 dream about uh, becoming a vocalist? Or um, not really, no. I mean, I, as I say, I got into pop music initially because of playing the drums, really. That's what I wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, in my early teens. And about the age of 15, I got my first drum kit. Um, so it all started from there, really, with pop music. Uh, before that, as I say, I hadn't really thought of it as a career, you know. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, develop your style? Uh, you, uh, I mean, you sound a little different from uh, other uh, young singers. And, uh... um, I think it's just a natural tone more than anything. I mean, uh, I obviously have a, a deep voice as opposed to perhaps um, the sort of voice you would imagine because of the way I look and because of my age and everything. Um, but I think that's partly due to the music that I like. I like a lot of black American singers, mm -hmm. and I think that's influenced me and, and rubbed off on me even. so. Tell us about uh, the very famous three people uh, who are backing you up. Yep. Uh, what are they? Uh, producers, basically. Um, yeah. The names is uh, Mike Stock, Matt Aiken, Pete Waterman, Stock yeah. Aiken Waterman. Um, and my managers have known Peter Waterman for a long time. So when I was about, as I say, when I was about the age of 18 and 19, and I was singing in a band. Mm. Uh, the managers of that band, who are my managers now, mm. asked Peter Waterman to come down and see us playing in a club. Um, so when he came down, he was interested in me as a, as a solo artist as opposed to being in a band because we were very young, very immature and really there was potential but I think it was, um, I think it was plain to see without me sounding big-headed that I was perhaps a singer in a band that, um, I don't know really, I think there was, there was more to it than, you know, than that. I think the, the musicianship just wasn't up to scratch really. So basically I signed a deal with his company and I'm now produced by Stock Aitken Waterman. Um, they write a lot of my songs as well. They wrote half the songs on the album. Um, and they are very big producers, well, throughout the world, but especially in Europe at the moment. So. Yeah. How, how do you uh, work? I mean, do they just give you the uh, sheet of paper? Here's your music. Well, when they, when they produce their songs for me, or, or for any, anybody that they work with, they have a, um, a great, a real great control in what they do. Um, when I do my own songs, it is slightly different because I've got more control because they are my songs. Um, and they're sometimes produced by other people in the same company because it's actually a production company that you know that they have. Right. Um, but they are—it's almost like a machine the way they work, the way that they—it's like a conveyor belt of, of artists. Going back to almost like a Motown situation where the same people were writing and producing and almost doing everything, because it is even now a record company in itself. So they're almost self-sufficient, practically, you could say.